Good morning. Welcome to Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Fress, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Thanks for tuning in this morning. It's my pleasure to be here. This morning, I would like, as expected, to continue our reading and discussion of the book The Papacy and the Civil Power by R.W. Thompson. But specifically, I'd like to focus this morning and elaborate and ruminate on the subject that Dr. or that R. W. Thompson is speaking of right now, Dr. O. A. Brownson. Now, those who are not familiar, Dr. Brownson was a writer back in the 1849 back in 1849, and Dr. Brownson was used, says R. W. Thompson, by the Roman Catholic hierarchy the foreign-born Roman Catholic hierarchy in this, t- in this country. And in one place, uh, R.W. Thompson even alludes that they were Jesuit priests. That, R- that uh, O.A. Brownson was used by the Roman Catholic hierarchy to write these essays in order to prepare the minds of Roman Catholics in this country for what was soon to follow. In 1864, Pope Pius IX wrote what we know of today as the Encyclical and Syllabus of Error of 1864. Remember, Brownson is writing in 1849, and in 1864 would come the Syllabus of Error, where Pope Pius IX damned popular government, that is, all governments of, by, and for the people, all constitutional governments, asserting that the only rightful government is a government that comes from God, and the only government on the earth that comes from God comes from the vicar of God, the Pope of Rome. So all popular governments, that is, governments of, by, and for the people, are usurpations of the Pope's rightful authority. And that the government of the United States in particular, and also the popular governments that sprang up in Europe as a result of the, of the Protestant Reformation and the overthrow of the power of the papacy, were usurpations they were ungodly governments that they needed to be destroyed. And along with the destruction of those constitutional and, and uh, people-powered governments must also go the right of freedom of speech. You may not criticize the Pope or his king any more than you may criticize Christ. And freedom of the press and freedom of religion. You are not free to pick your own religion in Roman Catholicism. In Roman Catholicism, you must be Catholic because it is the one holy Roman Catholic and apostolic church. It is the only church on earth, says the Pope, the biblical Antichrist, wherein salvation is obtainable, and that all other religions are heretical and must be exterminated and extirpated and persecuted and coerced into becoming Catholic. And history makes clear, vividly clear, what the papacy's strategy is. You must be Catholic, or you must be dead. Now, some may find that an inflammatory overstatement, but, but history clearly bears this out. This is, a, this is indisputable for those who understand history. Now, I want to take some time with this portion of what R.W. Thompson is telling us about Dr. O.A. Brownson. It's, it's critical for understanding what comes up in, in the rest of this book. Consider this chapter preparatory for what we're going to read in the rest of the book. So it's, it's, it's imperative that we take a little time and ruminate and really digest what is taking place here. Now, as I alluded to further, uh, previously, first of all, the date. 
It says as early as 1849, Dr. O.A. Brownson, who had abandoned Protestantism under the pretense that it was necessary to human happiness that the whole world should be subjected to ecclesiastical government, did not hesitate to utter in behalf of the papacy, speaking for the papacy, such doctrines as would, if established in this country, upheave or overthrow the government of the United States and that of every state in the Union from their foundations. All right, let's just take that first statement, that first sentence, and cut it up and really ruminate on it. As I said before, 1849 precedes, by about 15 years, Pope Pius IX's encyclical and syllabus of error of 1864. Clearly, R.W. Thompson has overtly alluded that these foreign-born Roman Catholic priests, these Jesuit priests, who are loyal to a foreign potentate, that is the Pope, hate our free institutions, our popular government, our constitution, and our, our liberties and our rights. And they're using the pen of an American citizen, not their own, they're not using their own pens. They're not speaking themselves. They're using an American citizen, Dr. O.A. Brownson, to prepare for the upcoming syllabus of error, to condition the minds of Roman Catholics in this country to accept the tenets of the syllabus of error. Now, this Dr. O.A. Brownson... It clearly says, abandon Protestantism. In other words, he was a convert to the Roman Catholic Church. He had abandoned the faith of Jesus Christ and joined the Church of Antichrist. Now, clearly, we have to understand that if Brownson abandoned Protestantism in favor of Catholicism and seeks to prepared the minds of Roman Catholics in this country to accept the infallible power of the Pope and that the Pope is the supreme lawgiver of the world and has the right to command the people and the governments of the world and that that government is an ecclesiastical government or a government of God, Dr. Brownson had rejected the gospel. Because in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are told that once we are saved, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the kingdom of Christ is with us then. That is the ecclesiastical government. That is the government of God. That is the body of Christ. And this government, this kingdom, is not of this world. It is a government and a kingdom that is born from within. Now, Dr. Brownson seeks a government of God imposed from without. Dr. Brownson seeks an earthly kingdom not a heavenly one. And on, on the basis of his abandoning Protestantism in favor for Catholicism, I make the assertion, the bold, unapologetic assertion that Dr. O.A. Brownson had rejected the gospel, had rejected the heavenly kingdom of Christ, and was now part of the kingdom of Antichrist. Now, your mileage may vary, but what other alternative can there be? Was Dr. Brownson just merely deceived? Certainly he could not have been deceived had he been reborn, had he become knowledgeable of 
and a recipient of the authority of Christ and Christ alone. Dr. Brownson, had he accepted the gospel, would have been regenerated, reborn into the kingdom of Christ, the heavenly spiritual kingdom of Christ, knowing that the kingdom of Christ is not imposed from without. It is a rebirth. So he abandoned Protestantism, which means he abandoned the gospel and the leading and teaching of the Holy Spirit and the written word of God. He abandoned solo scriptura, solo fide, solo Christos, and he joined Roman Catholicism, and he's become an orator in favor of and a promoter of the kingdom of Antichrist, a kingdom imposed from without. Now, he said, Dr. Brownson in his essay said it was necessary to human happiness, not that we all receive liberty in Christ, but that the whole world should be subjected to ecclesiastical government. Now, most Christians would tell you, well, yes, we all must be subjective to an ecclesiastical government. In other words, a government born of God. But clearly, Brownson has a different interpretation of what the government of God is. And he says, he did not hesitate to utter in behalf of the papacy such doctrines as would, if established in this country, upheave the government of the United States and that of every state in the Union from their foundations. Now, what did he utter? And who did he utter it for? Clearly, he was uttering his statements on behalf of the papacy, says R.W. Thompson. R.W. Thompson is alluding that Dr. O.A. Brownson was under the direct influence of the Roman Catholic hierarchy, most particularly Jesuit priests in this country, foreign-born Jesuit priests. And they want to overthrow this government. They want to overthrow the power of the people and the people-centered government. The, The government is controlled by the people. The people are the power under the Constitution of the United States, as originally established in this country. To the papacy, that's, that's heretical. In the historically demonstrated mindset of the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope is the successor of Peter, they say, and that the Pope is the vicar or the replacement of Christ on earth, And he has all the power and authority of Christ. The earth is mine in the fullness thereof, says the Pope. Okay, this this is blasphemy. This is the basis of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, as the vicar and replacement of Christ on earth, he has the sole authority to establish the secular government the government of the United States and every other nation on the planet, and to impose upon them how to govern the people. In other words, the people are at the bottom of the pyramid in the papal scheme of things. The government is a servant to the papacy. Now, we've described this many times on Inquisition Update. If you're, if you're a regular listener, this, means, uh, this seems... Uh, extraordinarily redundant. But for the new people tuning in, it's important information. This is information that most people don't realize unless they've been taught. So, naturally, the papacy would find the government of the United States and all the the Republican governments that sprang up in Europe as a result of the Protestant Reformation as heresy complete heresy. It ignores the the so-called power of the Pope, the authority of the Pope, 
and puts the people at the top of the pyramid and the Pope at the bottom, way down on the bottom. As a matter of fact, the most outspoken Protestants clearly proclaim the papacy as Antichrist. And what, that's what we do here at Inquisition Update. We make no bones about who the Antichrist is. It is the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church. It's a counterfeit Christianity. It seeks to counter Christ. It's opposed to Christ. Though it names him, it is opposed to Christ in practice and in spirit. Now, O.A. Brownson is being used by the Roman Catholic hierarchy to prepare the, the, the intellectual so, uh, soil in preparation for Pope Pius IX's encyclical, of er, uh, encyclical and Syllabus of Error of 1864. And then only a few years after that, 1870, is coming the proclamation, the Roman Catholic dogma called the, the infallibility of the Pope. Papal infallibility. In other words an attribute, infallibility, that belongs to God only. I imagine, in doing upon a man a unique quality of God. I mean, if this doesn't smack of antichrist, nothing else does. I mean, when, when the papacy came out with their infallibility hoax... It should have convinced the whole world, this is Antichrist. This is a mere man. And he's arrogating to himself infallibility, and that the world must kowtow to this individual human being, both men, women, and children, and the governments of the world must now become subservient to this man, this fleshly man in Rome, as though he were Christ, though he were God himself? I mean, at some point you have to ask, where is the brains in the world? Can't people think for themselves? And, and why not the help from the Scriptures? Where is it written in the Scripture that any man is infallible? We only know of one flesh and blood man who was infallible, and he was incarnate. He came down from heaven. The papacy came from the earth. Earthy. Christ is heavenly. So the world should have instantly recognized at the time of the decree of papal infallibility in 1870 at the First Vatican Council, that this is Antichrist. But Dr. Brownson, this one-time so-called Protestant, having abandoned the faith of Jesus Christ, having abandoned the inherent internal, spiritual, and heavenly government of the Holy Spirit indwelling him, seeks an earthly kingdom, an earthly kingdom, a kingdom from without. Now, he's preaching, he's preaching a government that would overthrow the United States government. And it says, in an article on authority and liberty, that was the name of the article, authority and liberty, and first of all, doesn't it sound like a, a papal encyclical or a, a bull or something? Authority and liberty. Isn't it the Pope who loves to talk about authority all the time? And liberty? Oh, the Pope just loves to talk about liberty. He loved to talk about his authority as having derived from God as the soul's human source, the whole, the whole human fountain of God's truth is exhibited in the authority of the Pope. The Pope loves to talk about his authority having, having its derivation from God himself.
the vicar of God, right? Holy Father. <laughs> and he loves to talk about liberty. Read the encyclicals of the popes. They love to talk about liberty. And what is liberty to the pope? Freedom to be Catholic. Freedom to belong to that earthly church. Freedom to be Catholic without any opposition whatsoever in the world. In other words, opposition from the heavenly kingdom. The earthly, is, the earthly kingdom is antithesis to the heavenly kingdom. It hates the heavenly kingdom. It seeks to replace the heavenly kingdom. It seeks to usurp the heavenly kingdom, to quench the heavenly kingdom, to corrupt the heavenly kingdom, and to rise above the heavenly. That's the Roman Catholic Church. And liberty according to this Antichrist power in Rome, is the liberty to be free of God and subservient to a man. Now, in the article that he entitled Authority and Liberty, Brownson pointed out the absolute and plenary authority of God over all things spiritual and tempor temporal. So far, so good, right? If you're a Protestant, somebody says that man ought to submit to God in all things spiritual and temporal. These are benign words, matter of fact. These are supportive of the heavenly kingdom, seemingly. So all anybody who had heard this message of Brownson superficially without really digesting it would have thought, well, this man's a Christian. That we ought to all submit to the authority of God over all things spiritual and temporal. And it continues, and denied that any body or community of men as men, quote, has any rightful authority either in spirituals or temporals. In other words, this too, this this too is is perfectly compatible with the true Christian religion that no man or community of men has any jurisdiction or right of authority either in spiritual matters or in temporal matters that God is the supreme authority. So the message put in these terms appeals to anyone who calls themselves Christian, whether they be Catholic or, or Protestant, whether they be of this so-called earthly kingdom or the true heavenly kingdom of Christ. Yes, God is the supreme lawgiver. No man has the right to change God's law. The Scripture says man ought to obey God rather than men. The Scripture acknowledges the government of men is not the government of God. When there is controversy, man ought to examine himself and examine God's law and obey God rather than men. All right? The difference is where is that governance centered? Is it centered in Christ, or is it centered in Antichrist? And this is the that is always blurred and confused by the Roman Catholic Church because they assert that the Pope is Christ. He says that O.A. Brownson pointed out the absolute and plenary authority of God over all things spiritual and temporal. Now get this and denied, O.A. Brownson denied that any body or community of men as men has any rightful authority either in spirituals or temporals. In other words, O.A. Brownson says the government of men has no authority. Only the government of God has any rightful authority. 
Now, the immediate question one has to ask oneself regarding O.A. Brownson and his statement, correct on its face, why didn't O.A. Brownson recognize the papacy and the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church, the magisterium of the Roman Catholic Church, as a government of men? A body of men who out of his own mouth have no authority over anything spiritual or temporal. This is the deception. The deception is that this man in Rome is God's vicar and that he speaks for God, that he has God's authority. In contradistinction, direct contradistinction to God's clear teaching in the Scripture, he will not share his glory with anyone. He will not share his throne with anyone but his Son, Christ. And this is the root basis of all the error in the Roman Catholic Church. This is it in a nutshell. And what is horrifying to comprehend is that those who call themselves Bible believers and Protestants in this country have become ecumenical and now are being indoctrinated to share this view with Dr. Brownson that the papacy is the mouthpiece of God on earth and that we ought to submit to his authority. And were it not for this grievous error which has come through the ecumenical emergent church in this country, the new world order would be an impossibility. In Rome's eyes, Protestantism, biblical Christianity, the true faith of Jesus Christ, is dead. Rigor mortis is set in, stick a fork in it, it's done, and now we're free. We have liberty to be Catholic. And we've got the Protestants helping us to build our earthly church, our global earthly church church. You see why it's important to stop and ruminate on what O.A. Brownson, a one-time so-called Protestant, now come papist, promoting this idea that the Pope is God's vicar on earth, that he is the fountain of the ecclesiastical government to which man ought to submit and that the governments of the world must be fashioned under his decree, and that they must rule supreme over the people, and that and in order to achieve that, it must overthrow the government of the United States of America. R.W. Thompson was Secretary of the U.S. Navy. R.W. Thompson, despite what is said on Wikipedia, was expert at assessing the threats to our republic, both foreign and domestic, and he's just now proved it. R.W. Thompson assesses that the greatest threat to our free institutions, the greatest threat to Protestantism, the greatest threat to religious liberty, liberty of conscience, liberty of religion, liberty of speech, Liberty of the press is the Roman Catholic hierarchy in this country. And he's got it. He nailed it. It's the most insidious threat in this country. And, of course, they've got us all talking about the Muslims. Like, uh, man, if we don't do something about the Muslims, they're going to rule the world in 50 years because they breed like mice. And they're emigrating to all the countries of the world. They're insisting that they have religious liberty to build their mosques and, and uh, you know, submit us all to, to Sharia law. You ever compare Sharia law with Roman Catholic canon law? Well, for those who are too lazy, lazy to take the time, just wait a while. 
because you're going to find out what it's like to live under Roman Catholic canon law. They've been converting our Constitution to Roman Catholic canon law for decades and decades and decades. You feel oppressed. You, you feel your, your liberty slipping away. Well, just take it from the man who loves liberty, the Pope of Rome, to take away your rights and to make you free to worship him on your knees. And he's doing it through the government. You ever feel like the government of the United States has become your enemy? Why is that? R.W. Thompson has told us. And Brownson, just 15 years before the papal encyclical and syllabus of error of 1864, damning our form of government, and... Prior to 1870 at the First Vatican Council, where the Pope was declared infallible, Dr. Brownson is simply preparing the soil to receive this new world order. Back in 1849. Now, you think that it's a little bit, uh, well, presumptuous of me to assert that the papacy was building this new world order all the way back to 1849. Let me tell you, it's been the destiny, the prophetic destiny of the papacy to create this new world order ever since its foundation. And you will find its foundation all the way back to the Tower of Babel. That's why God specifically called the Roman Catholic Church to be mystery Babylon the Great. He says, as a consequence, this is Brownson speaking again, he insisted that all merely human authorities are usurpations, and their acts are without obligation, and that they are null and void from the beginning. In other and more practical words, that the authority of the people of the United States over the government is usurpation and that all the constitutions and laws that they have ordained and enacted by this authority are without obligation, null and void from the beginning. The people are not to rule. They are to be ruled by an ecclesiastical authority called the Pope. That's a new world order which really isn't new at all. It's just the reestablishment of the old world order in that period of history we call the Dark Ages. And obviously it was called dark for a very specific reason. Satan was the head of it. And his man on on the earth, the Pope, the biblical and historical Antichrist, was the source of all that darkness. And you have to ask yourself again, How is it that O.A. Brownson, who could so overtly tell the truth that no man has authority over God, that all real authority in heaven and in earth comes from God, and that men ought to be subservient to God and obedient to God, and that all established governments of men should be put down, how is it that he failed to realize that the papal system is a man-made system? And that it is without obligation. In other words, no one has any obligation to obey this man-centered church and this man-centered papacy and that their laws, their Roman Catholic canon law, is null and void from the beginning. He says, All right to command, whether of parent or pastor, prince, individuals, or communities, he centers in the Pope as the vicar of God on earth and in him alone. There's the error. He contradicted himself. All human authority is null and void, yet he puts all authority in a man, the Pope. 
You see how Satan can twist a man's mind? Can even lure him out of the truth, out of Protestantism, out of the Bible, out of the heavenly kingdom of God, and put him smack dab in the center of this man-made church promoting this man-made cult called Catholicism and the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Pope of Rome. Brownson insists that through the Pope and by virtue of his authority, religion must found the state. In other words, no state government is legitimate unless it is founded by the Pope, because he's God. And that the only absolute and unlimited freedom consists in absolute and unconditional subjection to God. I don't have a problem with that, but but who does he say is God on earth? The Pope! That is to his vicar, Christ's vicar, the Pope, who alone is authorized to declare his will, God's will. Everything contrary to this, notwithstanding the Constitution of the United States and that of every state in the Union are contrary to it, he pronounces to be nonsense or blasphemy. Brownson and the Pope declare as nonsensical and blasphemy any government that is not derived from the Pope. And this is the belief of Roman Catholics. They must believe this on pain of excommunication. That the Pope is the vicar, the replacement, the mouthpiece, the throne of Almighty God on earth. And that no government is legitimate unless it is authorized by the papacy. No government of men is holy and righteous unless it is subservient to the papacy. And that the people are to be governed. And that that indwelling kingdom should be overthrown. That indwelling, Holy Spirit-filled believer is no authority at all. And neither is that Holy Spirit that indwells him, that governs every aspect of his life in conformity to God's holy law. You see, a true biblical government is an internal government. It's invisible. You can't see it. Only in the fruits of the believer. Peace. A natural love for a fellow man. Shedding forth God's grace abroad. Proclaiming the salvation of Jesus Christ. Promoting a heavenly kingdom. An internal government. An eternal government. Not a temporal government of men. We are told that this temporal world is going to be destroyed. And along with it, the papacy. And his kingdom. That's the truth. that Christ died for our sins. It was His holy blood that washed our sins away. What Pope ever died for a man? What Pope ever sacrificed his own life for the remission of sins? He's a counterfeit. And he's deceived the whole world. And he's even deceiving the Protestant world. And what's going to be the result? Bloodshed. Tribulation. Persecution. A continuation of what has transpired on the earth at the hands of the papacy for nearly two millennia. You'd think after 2,000 years, man would begin to comprehend. After 2,000 years of bloodshed, persecution... Inquisition, torture, 
torment, war, crusades, ethnic cleansings, holocausts, that man would begin to comprehend. And especially here in America. We sit here and we lose our liberties every day, becoming more and more and more dependent on a bigger and more powerful and more authoritative, more dictatorial government. And we never stop to think that the source of all that tyranny is coming from the Pope. He's, Im he's imposing Roman Catholic canon law on the people of this country with the unwitting acquiescence of Christians. And he's doing it through our own government. And we're taught to think it treasonous to question the authority of our government. We're called domestic terrorists if we bring a shadow of doubt against our government. When the papacy says no government on the earth is legitimate unless it gets its power from the Pope and imposes his law upon mankind. And dissenters to this tyranny are to be extirpated and exterminated. We need to wake up. This author is so much dissatisfied with the structure of the government under which he was born here in America and by which he is allowed the liberty of speech and of the press, even to the extent of assailing its most cherished provisions, as to insist that the papacy alone possesses the only divine authority ever conferred upon any earthly tribunal to make laws for the government of mankind and that in submitting to it we submit to God, quote, and are freed from all human authority, unquote, because whatsoever it teaches and commands in reference to all spiritual and temporal things must be and is infallibly true. That's what Dr. Brownson said. Therefore, in the temporal order, the natural world, in the governments of men, civil, civil affairs, according to Brownson, the authority of the papacy is nothing but the assertion over the state of the divine sovereignty, which it represents, the, which the papacy represents. So if you want to live under an ecclesiastical government, if you want to live under the government of God, if you want to live under the kingdom of Christ, you must submit to Antichrist. And he says, And hence all the authority derived from the people, which does not bring the state into this condition of obedience and subserviency to the papacy. Now here he is insisting that the people of this country are to help to force our government to become obedient and subservient to the papacy. And the people who do not bring the state into this condition of obedience and subservient to the papacy are despotic because it is authority without right. It is of will unregulated by reason. It is of power disjoined from justice. and further pursuing the same idea in opposition to the fundamental principle of all popular and representative government, he continues thus, quote, Withdraw the supremacy of the church from the temporal order, and you deprive the state of that sanction, by asserting that it does not hold from God, and is not amenable to his law. 
you give the state simply a human basis and have in it only a human authority which has no right to govern and which is intolerable tyranny to compel me to obey. In other words, any government of, by, and for the papacy is tyranny. Any government of, by, and for the people is tyranny, according to O.A. Brownson. It's tyrannical. It overthrows the power of God, the papacy. He's calling for the overthrow of our government, O.A. Brownson. And he's speaking to Catholics. And he's speaking to Catholics as one who came out of Protestantism. Owe Brownson was a very powerful man in the in the hand of his Jesuit handlers. Said Brownson then pursues another method of reason, which under color of, of a single concession brings him to the same conclusions. The main object, that is, the absolute and universal power of the papacy, never being lost sight of, agreeing that the state has some authority within the limits of the law of nature, he concedes to it the right to act, quote, without ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical restraint or interference, unquote, when only so long as it confines itself within the scope of that law. In other words, the only legitimate authority that the secular government has is in the realm of the natural law. Well, let me give you an example. We all know that it's unsafe to drive like a madman in a school district. You're liable to run over a little kid. So the natural law simply indicates the necessity for a speed limit in a, in a school zone. That's the natural law. We also know that, and common sense and natural law dictates, that it's not good to throw your garbage down on the ground because the rats feed on it, and the fleas feed on the rats, and the fleas bite the people, and then we all get sick. So the natural law dictates that the, 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 the civil government has, an, has a, an inherent obligation to impose laws regarding the disposal of waste. Okay? So, if the civil power will stay in that realm, it may do so without ecclesiastical oversight and dictation. And so long as it confines itself within the scope of the natural law, its authority is, a le is legitimate. But listen now what he says. But he puts such limitations upon even this restricted right as to render it of no avail for any other purpose, uh, for any of the purposes of the independent government by insisting that as the papacy holds its authority directly from God, and exercises it under his revealed law, which includes the law of nature, it is therefore the only competent judge of infractions upon both the revealed and the natural law. So he's going so far as to contradict himself and saying that even the authority of the state over the natural law is derived from the papacy. O.A. Brownson really believed that the Pope was God on earth. And therein lies Antichrist. Therein lies the New World Order. Therein lies papal tyranny. The man of sin. The son of perdition. The one who will be consumed by the brightness of Christ's coming. 